Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be continuing our look at the Xbox One's architecture according to the SDK document leaks and performing some analysis on the GPU architecture as a whole as well as the supporting systems. This follows on from our original analysis of the Xbox One's SDK leak, and if you've not already done so, I'd suggest you check that out. Um, this is also an article. So, if you want a lot more information, you should check the article, which has a lot of reference links that I've used, as well as various images and diagrams, which will probably help you to understand this, as well as additional text to kind of fill in the blanks, if you will, because otherwise this video is going to become ridiculously lengthy. With all of that said, this is going to be pretty technical. Um, I'm going to do my best to simplify it in this video, but I still want it to be pretty technical because that's kind of what people have asked me to do, um, judging by a poll on Facebook. I'll probably release a less technical version of this in the not too distant future. But I think that's enough words wasted. Let's begin. So, um, as I said, if you've not checked out the first part of SDK analysis, I would recommend you do at the very least to get an understanding of the graphics APIs, the processor, the GPU as a whole, the specifications, and so on. If you've done that, or you feel that you're confident, or whatever, let's start on the next part. So, to understand where we're going with this and what Microsoft have done with the Xbox One's GPU. Unfortunately, we can't just jump in. Um, we're gonna have to actually discuss the GCN architecture. GCN stands for Graphics Core Next, which is created by AMD. It's a DirectX 11.1 .1 GPU. It's exactly the same for the Xbox One. It says so right there in the SDK documents. And the closest desktop variant would be, I believe it's pronounced the Bonaire. That's B-O-N-A-I. RE. I'll spell it out one more time because I fail, because I've got a bit of a cold. B-O-N-A-I-R-E. More specifically, the variant is the 70, sorry, 7790. God, my concentration's done. 7790. With some customizations, we will go through those, and its API is a heavily modified version of the DirectX 11.1, um, and it's known as Monolithic Driver. As I said, we've discussed that in the previous leaks. I don't want to go over them all again. <clears throat> so, to understand the basic modifications, let's now start going into the, the actual GPU architecture as a whole. So, at the highest level, the Xbox One's GPU is comprised of 12 compute units, also known as CUs. Now, Microsoft confused things because they don't stick with AMD's official naming conventions. They refer to the compute units as shader cores. Technically, there are 14 of these on the Xbox One's die, 20 on the PS4, but two have been disabled for both consoles to increase yields. In other words, you're left with 12 and 18 CUs, respectively. <clears throat> A compute unit is partitioned into four separate SIMD units. Each of these can run between 1 to 10 wave fronts, which we'll get into. And each SIMD contains 16 ALUs, or Arithmic Logic Units. A lot of people will call these things such as shader processors, they'll call them shaders, they'll call them stream processors. The name varies, but the generic name is ALU. Okay? So, just for reference, the Xbox One has 768. In, ref in addition to the four SIMD units, you'll have a level 1 cache an LDS, or known as a local data share. Um, the local data share is a bit different from the cache. The cache is basically where instructions are generally kept waiting to be processed, or, and you can think of the LDS as like a scratch pad. In other words, while operations are happening, if they're too large, they can kind of spill out to that, and so on. Um, Microsoft, however, have changed this name. It's no longer LDS. For the Xbox One, it is known as local shared memory. So, in addition to that, there's four texture units and a scalar unit. A scalar unit handles arithmetic operations that ALUs, the ALUs aren't really designed to handle. Typically, this will be stuff such as conditionals, um, ifs, whens, that type of thing. So, that, all of that together makes one CU, or if you prefer, Shady unit, whichever abbreviation you want to go with. In addition to that, 
You've got 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache. The GCN architecture does differentiate, or it does change on this, but the Xbox One version has 512 of level 2. Level 1 cache is faster, but is not, but is a shared just between the CU, whereas the level 2 cache is shared resource among the entire GPU. And finally, the 16 ROPs, or REST operators, which are like the final stage in the scene rendering. Um, we'll get more into the level 2 cache towards the end when we're discussing compute. Right. So, what's the difference between the Xbox One GPU, the PlayStation 4 GPU, the PC, and everything else? Well, the Xbox One features two asynchronous compute engines. They are known as ACE. Two graphic command processors, which combined with the eight graphic context have spurred a flurry in gaming websites. There was a lot of websites that were reporting this and going really crazy over it, and I didn't to begin with because I wanted to have some context, which is a lot of what this article is about. Um, and we're going to, of course, answer this. So to give you an idea of what I mean by that, it sounds really great to have two graphics command processors, right? But... It's like me saying to you, well, the Xbox One has 8 gigabytes of RAM when we know from documentation and from developers that in reality only 5 gigabytes is available for games developers. In other words, 8 gigabytes is a really good number, but the reality is only X is available for games developers. So the second question we have to ask is how different is it from the PS4 or a plain regular GCN card? In other words, for example, you go out and buy, say, an R9 290 what's the difference is and the final question is what really is it going to do for frame rates what about resolution will that games have better detail in other words what physical difference is it going to make to us as gamers so i'm going to proceed with the understanding that you probably don't know what graphic context aces and graphic command processes are i'm going to give you the very basic overview of what this does because otherwise it's going to take me too long to explain it all so you can look at this as kind of like the simplified version i have explained it a little deeper in the article but to be honest it probably goes to like four thousand words because a lot of this is really super in-depth stuff so you can look at this as kind of like it gives you a basic understanding enough to understand what i'm talking about so a graphic context as an overview think of a graphics context as a state that can be saved or resumed at a later date it generally will define basic drawing attributes of a scene, for example, the basic layout of a box or the colour of it, that type of thing. And content switching, or context swi switching, shall I say, is business as usual. Its purpose is to keep the GP GPU utilisation as high as possible. Um, the reason for this is because a GCN, Graphics Core Next, is an in-order processor. I'll repeat that again, in order. Instructions are fetched, executed, and completed in the order that they are issued. If an instruction stalls, they can cause other instructions to behind them to install as well. And thus, it's very important the pipelines run smoothly. We'll get more into that in just a moment. The next one is a GCP, or Graphic Command Processor. Now, the Graphic Command Processor has a very simple job. Its job is to communicate with the host CPU, in this case the Jaguar CPU, in the Xbox One, and it must keep track of the various graphic states, read commands from the command buffer. In other words, it will tell the GPU to draw stuff, it will interpret commands from, from the CPU, and so on. It basically will try to keep ahead of what the GPU is doing. So let's assume, just for the sake of argument, the GPU is processing command 23 it would like to be on to command 25 or 28 or something like that. Obviously, that's just a pure example. Next, we have the asynchronous compute engines. They are pretty similar to the GCP, but they handle compute work. In other words, if developers are using the GPU for, say, physics, it dispatches the compute tasks to the CUs and manages the resources and naturally interprets the instructions and then has those executed. <clears throat> okay. So, now we enter a little bit of speculation, and I say speculation because unfortunately I don't have some of the documentation I would need to really understand this. I can give you a very good educated guess as to what the two GCPs are for. Now, 
I base this on the reason I say I can't give an exact answer is because certain documentation is missing from the SDK. Not a lot of news web websites aren't reporting that, but it's true. Um, basically, certain parts are completely and utterly locked off, and we cannot access them. And obviously, some people have or do have NDAs, but they are not going to answer. The second point is that the second GCP um, is not explicitly stated in the documentation that we've got. And it only really mentions one, despite the fact that diagrams are showing two. So, what does that mean? Well, um, firstly, according to rumours, and once again, I'm hearing mixed things about this, but some links are showing that the, X that the PlayStation 4 does also have two GCPs. Logically, and a leading theory that I've got, and I've read around some more forums, uh, including Beyond 3D, I've read NeoGAF, and it's kind of the theory that makes the most sense to me. Um, I've looked through dozens of different white papers on the GCN architecture, I've read countless programming guides and stuff like that, and pretty much anything that's been released, and I can't make really any other guess apart from these two. The most logical one that I can assume is that the second GCP is locked off for games developers. It's not available. What I think is happening is that it's basically responsible for OS tasks. So in other words, it's responsible for running Snap and other bits and bobs that you would expect um, and other OS displays. Now, you will recall that the Xbox One CPU has one core and 20% of another, or two, depending on how developers are splitting up the resources, but it still needs to be rendered on screen. There are some reports that it's actually possible that the extra GCP is handling certain graphics contexts, but the more, and I kind of figured that would be the case to begin with, but when I read about the PlayStation 4 reports, as well as some extra stuff with the GCN architecture as a whole, and I will get into that in just a moment, I am thinking that that's not the case. But once again, it's only a best case scenario, a best guess scenario. In six months' time, if that's when the NDAs lift, I don't know when the NDAs do lift, and we get completely different information. Sorry, <laughs> pretty much. Anyway, uh, my bad. So the GCP is responsible for helping issue additional graphics contexts, which, as I said, we will discuss. Um, and throughout the documentation, as I mentioned, there's only one. Microsoft, however, did say that they did put some um, customised options on the command processor. And I'll read this out. We took the opportunity to go and highly customise the command processor on, this, on the GPU, again concentrating on CPU performance. The command processor block interface is a very key component in making the CPU overhead of graphics quite efficient. And then basically go into a whole bunch of PRE stuff. And they said that with the Xbox One uh, customised processor we've created extensions on top of Direct3D which fit very nicely into the D3D model and stuff we would like to integrate back into the mainstream or mainline uh, 3D PC. So what you can kind of guess with that is it's most likely you're starting to see draw bundles and other such commands basically issued. A lot of this is DX12 stuff. Some Microsoft have said that they're not going to talk about yet. There's references to certain bits in the documents, which are probably going to be DX12 related, but we will talk about those in just a moment. So, what about the number of graphics contexts? There's a specific area in this document which reads, and I quote, the Xbox One's GPU has eight graphics contexts, seven of which are available for games, loosely speaking, a sequence of draw calls that share the same render state, they're said to share the same context. Dispatches don't require graphics contexts, and they can run in parallel of graphics workloads. That's a lot of information, right? A different part of the leaked document says the number of deferred contexts you want to create during initialization time depends on the number of parallel rendering tasks the engine needs to perform. Although the system allows for a maximum of 48 contexts to exist, in general you shouldn't create more than 6 deferred. Of course it's up to you to tailor basically um, based on your requirements. So what in the hell does that mean? Well, it actually kind of tells you. Um, first of all, I need to tell you what a deferred context is. 
the keyword is actually deferred. There are some images in the article if you need more information on this, but I think this is pretty simple to explain. It's, it's quite complicated when you first hear it, but once you understand it, it's really simple. So all the deferred um, context is, is basically um, an instruction, you can think of it as a call, think instruction, that aren't executed straight away. They're basically sent over the command list and they're just waiting to be executed um, at a later date. Now you'll notice the number 48 that we discussed earlier when I said uh, the Xbox One can handle 48 deferred contexts. Now it really divides quite nicely, if you go 8 divide, um, it really divides quite nicely into 6 which is the number of CPU cores developers have unless of course they're using the 7th core which we'll get into in just a second. So because of this, six or seven of the cores are able to set six or seven, possibly seven, are able to send some work per cycle. But remember, sometimes instructions can take longer than another one to execute. So if that's the case, it's just working on current context of the CPU time will go idle, which is not ideal. You want basically the best throughput possible from all of the cores, 100% basically. So, thus, if you're waiting for a slow operation, Microsoft give an example of this, a slow memory operation, and slow memory read actually is what they give an example for, uh, say for example from DDR3, another deferred context, which let's just assume is level in level 1 cache or level 2 cache, another deferred context will start up on the same core, let's just say core 2 for example, and that will operate or basically execute while you're waiting for the other memory operation. So what we don't have is enough information to guess on what's going on with the PS4. We can make some guesses on the PC thanks to some different documents. There's a Southern Island programming guide that's available. I've linked to it in the article if you can't find it via Google. And on page 14 of that, it reads, and I quote, max underscore context, max content on it in chip values is 1 to 7 max content of 0 is not valid since that context is now used for clear state context for example 3 means the GPU uses context 0 to 3 it uses 4 contexts so it's very typical uh, of the GCN architecture according to the documentation uh, possessing a single context at a time processes a single context at a time in other words, from what I can tell, the fact that the GPU of the Xbox One handles 8 graphics contexts it pretty much appears to be the same as the basic GCN architecture. We can continue that by another point, and that is that according to documentation, the GCN can process compute and process context based on a number of ACEs available. Now, uh, let me just kind of go back a second on my notes. The basic desktop GPU does handle a single context at a time, but it is possible to operate on multiple, but you need to run them serially in the new context switch. Um, in terms of compute context, it could process the amount of computes simultaneously based on the number of ACEs that are available or compute um, queues. So you kind of get an idea of what I mean by that in that, let's say you've got two ACEs, that means it can process two instructions simultaneously. Now, there are definitely going to be some things which do change with DirectX 12. One is that obviously when it in, um, integrates into the Xbox One, we don't really know what's going to happen. With current DX11, the CPU talks to the GPU a single core at a time. So in other words, it's not running these things in parallel. It's basically one, then the other, then the other issues, and so on. That's going to change a lot because then when DirectX 12, each can basically talk to the GPU simultaneously. So you could get, for example, uh, on a PC, your tri-core PC, all three cores could be issuing instructions simultaneously. That has been a rather large improvement compared to, let's say, DirectX 9, which previously only could issue one render thread. That, run, that one render thread would basically be responsible for issuing all commands. And obviously then you would start getting stalls if that thread was busy doing something. So in other words, let's say thread 2, 3 wouldn't exist. Now on the Xbox One and DirectX 11, that's not the case. So what you can start doing is you can 
start serially sending data to the um, the GPU in question. I want to now discuss a little bit in con um, regards to compute. This is not the full thing, but I do want to discuss this. Um, I've still got some bits to find on this, but I do want to discuss what I found so far. So, compute on the Xbox One, as I've said, runs in parallel to the graphics workload. So, there's a fence API that synchronizes execution between the context and the CPU. In other words, the making sure that the CPU and the GPU know what they're doing, make sure that the instructions don't screw up, and making sure that everything's sweet and everything's good. The level one cache is shared between both compute and graphical data, and Microsoft did not implement volatile bit on the GPU. I'll explain what that does in just a second. Um, now, to explain this, Mark Cerny for the PlayStation 4 said, the PlayStation 4 does implement volatile bit, and Mark Cerny, of course, is the lead architect. He said back um, to Gamma Sutra, link in the article, to support the case, where you want to use the GPU's level 2 cache to simultaneously for both graphics and asynchronous compute, we've added a bit in the tags of the cache lines, and we like to call this a volatile bit. You can then selectively mark all accesses by compute as volatile, and when it's time for the compute to read from system memory, it can invalidate selectively the lines it uses in level 2. When it comes back to write the results, it can then write back selectively the lines it uses. This is not the case on the Xbox One, because it says, and I quote from the SDK documentation, Note, cache flushes affect the entire cache range, and cache flushes are not supported and um, range-based cache flushes are not supported by hardware. This may affect any GPU work executing on graphics context at the same time. Which means that if you do need to do something for the Xbox One, as far as I can read with the documentation, you have to basically invalidate the entire cache, which kind of sucks. Finalizing, um, another problem with the Xbox One's GPU compared to the PlayStation 4 is the, the a number of aces are lower. So the Xbox One does support two aces and they can handle two, uh, sorry, eight Qs each. So two aces, eight Qs each, so that's 16 total. The PlayStation 4 and other modern GPUs, let's say for example the R9 280, have eight aces. With the case of the PS4, it has eight aces and eight Qs per ace, which means you have grand total of 64. So that, combined with the level 2 volatile bit, does give the PS4 a bit of a helping hand in those situations. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll be releasing a final part, possibly one, maybe two more parts, I'm unsure, um, which will be going through the Xbox Live, audio systems, and a few other bits. That I kind of have to round up. But hopefully you've enjoyed this. As I said, this one's quite technical. If you need more explanations or, you know, kind of more in-depth, then you've got the article, which you can probably read to kind of uh, give you some visual aid as well. Um, but anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.